you see uh, that clip of Nina asking uh, Giri what he thought about Power Slap, but you could tell he got very fucking triggered. Dude, I am him and he is me, bro. <laughs> Honestly, bro. <laughs> yeah, but he was like, not even like a little, like very like, like almost offended. So, dude. Did, it's almost like if you slapped Yuri in the face. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even that. trying to be funny. I'm not even exaggerating. Like The two you, things that irritate Yuri Prohoshka the most. Power slap and spiritual forces. Did you see? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, did you think this motherfucker did voodoo? He's like, witchcraft. Al is just like fucking. He's just he's just going out hanging out with like his tribe that he's like technically linked to, you know, his family heritage. And Yuri's like, that motherfucker is going out there using some voodoo dolls and shit, you know. And meanwhile, we got Yuri trying to fucking slay fake Yakuza and for real kill Onis and shit, you know. Anyways, man, we got Alex Bahia, Yuri Proshaka, the rematch. Just seven months after Alex Bahia defeated Yuri to win the light heavyweight gold, they're going to run it back because Conor McGregor broke way, his toe. What's Because three fights for Yuri, we haven't even thought about. What's been the time gap between both fights? Or oh, three fights? Three fights. Yuri hasn't fought. He's only fought a. Uh, this is going to be his second fight. Oh, really? Dude, so, I, he, I, so he beat, knocked dude, out Rochester. I got fucked up, dude. I thought Poetan was this year. Nah, that was but a, but there's still a de- like that no. gap is still short though. Yeah, he's well, look, man. So how big how big is that gap between those fights? Uh, this fight? four months and then another three months. No, two months. So four months between the Paya Rochic fight and then two months between Rocket and Paya too. That's some crazy activity, dude. Him and Alex. Yeah. I, I was like, hey, really, I saw somebody uh, compare him recently. They're like, he is Donald Cerrone, but he wins the title. Granted, fights. though, Propoton, I will say it's a little different, though, because he didn't have to go through a very long fight in his fight. That's true. And it was one round. It was short. And so Rocket, I'd say he's had like a fair bit of downtime. Well, Rocket was kind of t- tuning him up, you know, before he got finished. But that's also kind of how everybody fights Yuri, I feel like. Um, but look, man. I'm very torn on this fight personally. De Gea still has, he's still healing from broken toes, which makes it really funny that Connor pulled out, but still, still healing from the broken toes. Obviously, he beat Yuri the first time, but before getting knocked out in the like late second round, they were going back and forth. It was one of those moments where it's like the fight went nine minutes. Yuri probably won three of them. Alex probably won five of them. You know what I mean? It was, it was a competitive fight, main eventing international fight week. Who do you got in the main event of UC 303? I mean, Josh, it's still got to be Poet Tom for me. Yeah. I just still think I feel like Yuri. I like, dude. I remember when he was fighting that fight, and I just saw him get really wide and reaching. I'm like, this is how it's gonna end, and it did. It ended up going because yeah. of that. And obviously, I know, I know Yuri. Like, we've seen some footage and all that. It's trying to clean it up, trying to change some stuff, trying to because you, you, you know, he wants to fight on the feet. They're like, they're, you know, there's something about it. Granted, he's also not like traditionally like a wrestler. He can take the fight there, though. Yeah. But I mean, if we're talking about like the two guys in the division, who I'm like. Like right now, that I think we're gonna beat Poetan, it's, it's probably on Kalaya of Yuri, and both in dress. And I, and the thing is, like the way they would both fight is drastically different from one yeah. another. Um, and also, it's just gonna be like I'm curious to see, like it's the second time now. You know how motivated is each guy? Like I know Yuri is motivated, right? Like he took a fight quick, he came back, he took care of business, he took the call on this one also already. You know, Poetan's been. Kind of living life, enjoying, having a bunch of moments. Is he also still motivated? Is he still yeah. present in the moment? Which I mean, I imagine for both these guys, they will be. You know, they're professionals. But just like, just the way Yuri fights, I I think yeah that it's probably going to happen again again in a similar way. I could be absolutely wrong in like the Yuri adjustments, the changes in stance, the way he's going to fight. You know. Is going to be different, and, I, and I'm curious to see how it is. Because if you remember, I think early on he went for a few takedowns. He did, and he even got a takedown in the first round, and like about two minutes ago, just couldn't do a whole lot with it. Yeah, you know? put Alex on his back near the fence. But look, um, very torn on this fight personally because I think Yuri. This is, so this is this is this is a this is a uh, I'm going to borrow stuff from like an English class, right? There's a literary device called like it's called like idiot plot or some shit. I can't remember the, what the, the term is, but it's like whenever somebody in a story advances in the story because everybody around them are fucking idiots. I feel like that's Alex Bahia's UC career. You know what I mean? I feel like everybody like Sean Trexler just choosing to stand with him. You know what I mean? Uh, fucking having man, who else? Cho- Jamal Hill standing with him. You're going for a takedown. In the first round, getting it, and then round two, not coming out and shooting for a takedown. You know what I mean? Small stuff like that. I think Yuri Prohoshka can win this fight, but I think he's going to let this ego get the better of him. And the thing is, he's going to, I mean, if he does win this fight, he's going to win it 
the way he wants to win and not the way he should win it. And that's exactly it. Because he, he's a he's he's a you know, in the words of Luke Rockle, he's a fucking samurai. You he, know, he, <laughs> he, he can't help himself. Yeah, he can't help. It's himself. kind of almost like a Michael Chandler effect, right? I. I, that's actually a great comp. Yeah, that's a great except, comp. Except the yeah. IQ is not this low. Except, it, oh, well, also, like Chandler, like Chandler back in the Bellator days, you know, he would shoot for takedowns and he'd be like, oh shit, Brent Primus is tuning me up right now. I gotta <laughs> fucking, I gotta take his ass down. I gotta get kicked in the leg. Exactly. So I can take this no contest. Exactly. And my leg can give out. Now, kidding, now he's like, fucking, I'm just gonna wing bombs. I think Yuri, he's awkward enough and this is what i said in the first side. i think for the first side i even picked here because i'm like he's awkward enough to have success i'm just not sure how far that goes we saw in the first fight how far that goes you're gonna land some punches you're gonna have success like i said he probably won three minutes of the fucking nine it, minute it fight, went to the third right? round last time it, it went i think he finished it late second oh, fuck, really? so see that's the other thing i think that another thing is that i'd love to see is like take this man into deep water you've been into deep water we haven't seen poets on deep except in the izzy fight and look he was able to get it but it was like yeah, it was with, like what he had left. It was with about a, it was about fifty two seconds left in the second round when he got finished. So That's what I'm, saying. Um, I'm gonna go and take Alex Pay too. I would love to pick Yuri. I would love and just for the memes because I think Yuri might be my favorite guy personality in the UFC right now. You're picking Yuri? No, I'm picking Alex. I would love to pick Yuri though. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Um, I think he's just one of my favorite personalities in the UFC right now. Just the fact, dude, the fact that he's like media day like, yo, Alex, be a be a be a fair man. Fight without the spirits fight without the force. It's all good. Are you ready to get the then, footage of him manifesting it the night before being outside the arena <laughs> and all that? Do you see and then Pahaya I love his method though. Like I yeah. really do love He's a fun He's dude. the most interesting he might be yes. the most interesting guy in the UFC. Like. Ex- that's what I'm fucking saying, man. Yeah, exactly. And then uh do you also the second part of this before we move on to the co-main. Alex, did you see somebody asked about what Yuri said? He's like, you know, everybody has their spirits and their forces. Maybe he's just not doing it right. Or some shit, and I'm like, dude, I love Alex. Dude, this dude does have some cold ass responses. I know he's, I love that. What did he do? I felt like he did something recently that was very giga chat. I'm not even talking about the tires. Was it, though. was it, uh, whenever Jamal Hill started coming after him, he's like, oh, I guess he just woke up, or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. he always, he, do, he does have some pretty sick bad one-liners. Motherfuckers. translated one liners. Yeah. Right. Speaking of bad motherfuckers, we got two featherweights stepping up on about 16, 17 days notice. If that, roughly, if that. You know? <laughs> who knows when they start asking about the fight, regardless, Brian Ortega, T City. Uh, Los Angeles is finest. All right. Has not competed since the mission win over Yair Rodriguez in Mexico City earlier this year. Coming back here to take on the Phenom, Diego Lopez, 29 years young. No moniker for Diego three Lopez. Wins in a row. I know. I agree. Uh, three wins in a we row. We got to come up with one. I think the Phenom works great, actually. I just, I just said that, but I, I kind of like that. You know? The Phenom, Diego Lopez. Regardless. This motherfucker is a bad man. I'm not going to fuck around here. I'm, I think Diego Lopez is going to go out there and tune up Ryan Ortega on Saturday. Um, I'm not normally a guy who rides hype trains like this, but I think if there's a guy... <laughs> After last week, right? I'm, yeah, right? Uh, if there's a guy who you don't want to step up and be like, oh, shit, all right, I'm taking a fight on short notice. My opponent's also going to be short notice. The last guy you would hear, like fucking Mick Maynard, say on the end of the phone, be like, oh, yeah, who am I fighting also on short notice? Is Diego Lopez. Because there's a motherfucker who's proved. It doesn't matter if it's... Fucking seven minutes, seven days, seven weeks. Diego Lopez shows up. But what's the most last minute switcheroo they've ever had? Like they had some, they had to get someone to fight. Kraus. The day of? The James Kraus. Uh, not day of, because that wouldn't work. They have to weigh in the day before. Like just could do the commission rules. Okay. But uh, he weighed in for that fight that he got robbed for, funnily enough. Uh, in, uh, in Houston, 247. Wait, so he wait, did he get called up the day of the weigh-in? Scheduled. To, so yes, he was scheduled to be a cornerman. And uh, he ended up facing, I think, Trevin Giles uh, on because they were just like, oh, shit, Trevin Giles opponents is out. James, you're like 187 right now. You want to fucking go split off a pound and hop on the scale for us? And that's what happened. And then he ended up, in my opinion, winning that fight. But it turns out Trevin Giles fucking jujitsu coach from seven years ago was a judge and scored the fight 30, 27. Oh, for I remember that. And nobody gave a fuck. Never, nobody talked about it because there's no fucking, you know, whatever. Point being. Both that's these the most guys. last one, the day of the win. Correct. That's actually pretty sick. But look, man, we got Brian Ortega, Diego Lopez. I'm assuming you're in agreement. With this him. is married Brian Ortega, dude. This is the most dangerous Brian Ortega we probably had. Married? Yeah. Who's he married to? His lady. I don't know who she I is. Didn't, I didn't she know. showed up. She was on the. I saw her on the embedded. I did not know that. That's actually. why. That's why he might be. That's why he'd be. Uh, yeah, you're dude, low key. 
Might be. It might be. He's got the married booth. Think about it. Before, you know, he was being a, you know, he was, he's got a, he's got a, yeah, anyways, yeah. You know, no so, judgment though. You know, hey, judgment. I mean, look, I personally, with Tracy Cortez, I would, I mean, look, I'm just saying. He's I a family man now? I wouldn't. I, I would be the family man in that situation. Yeah, he's a family man. Be loyal, now. you know. You know, he's, he's settled down. He's, he's, no. he's a different beast now, I think. Look, household loyalty respect, you know. Dude, Brian, if T-City wins this, will you be kind of like, I would actually like, be that's like, a good, fuck. Like, that's a good fucking I would, I would, dude, that's, that's what it comes down to. I think this But, dude, if Diego needed, Lopez breaks through, like, they're both insane moments, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I agree. This, that's why this fight By the way, are you a little disappointed this is a three-rounder, not a five-rounder? Yes, but I think just because of the circumstances, I'm going to give it has, a pass. It has to be three I got to give him a It has pass, to be three rounds, you know? yeah. Like, it just it has to be three rounds, I know. But, like, fuck. Dude. I know, man, I know. Fuck, I Josh. God damn it, why? Dude, but you got, I'm a, <laughs> but are, are you taking Diego Lopez? I am taking Diego Lopez. Via no. submit, no, I'm just kidding. Dude, if he submits him, that'd be some real shit. If either one submits the other guy, it's pretty crazy. Real. They both have insane jiu-jitsu. be some real shit, dude. But anyways, very excited for it. Next up on the main card, dude, this fucking, <laughs> this shit honestly kills me, to be completely honest with you. This card has gone through so many changes, so many of them, including these guys, neither one of them were scheduled to fight. Like Originally on this card to begin with. Not even just to begin with, like fucking a week and a half ago. Roman got added like five days ago or something. Dude, wasn't Roman like hiking? Like I saw his Snapchat and shit, or not his Snapchat, uh, his Instagram, I mean. I, I don't know about I that. Wish I, I mean, Roman might have some other people on Snapchat. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> that's Oh no! Anyway, so we have Anthony JP. Smith. No, <laughs> Anthony Smith. Anthony Lionheart Smith, who uh, look man got a you know kept his career alive honestly with with a winner for Vito Petrino. not his career but his contendership yeah, alive. Yeah, he uh, has to May. get that thirty nine and nineteen, bro. Be at those forty. Oh, wins. that'd be nice. Like what I tell you, man. You got to get to forty wins. You know. Yeah. Take on middleweight contender Roman Didalize. Roman stepping up here on short notice, up a weight class. Lost two in a row. I mean, it's looking rough. It's looking rough, but this is a big opportunity for him to just shoot straight up, straight up into like the top seven, you know? So I'm very up in the air on this one. Uh, who do you got, man? I got Anthony Lionheart Smith. Yeah. I agree. Supporting, you know, supporting Lionheart. Uh, I'm in full game with you, honestly. Um, and it's no, I mean, number 10 versus at middleweight versus number 10 at lightweight. <laughs> light heavyweight. I like that. Uh, I didn't realize that. I, I look. I'm, it's a fair I'm, matchup, dude. It is. It's a very fair matchup. That's I'm, always Roman. He's, Anthony Smith isn't even like crazy tall, right? I want to say Anthony Smith's like six three. He's six four. Roman is. Oh, I want to say mind. six one. Six three. Six four. Oh, six wow. three. So six Maybe? four. Six three. Number ten. Number ten. Both short notice. This motherfucker is even as shit, dude. Both like, mid thirties. Both mid thirties. Both have some big losses. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take Anthony Smith too. I just think he has more notice. He fought more recently, probably more. He's shape. actually a light heavyweight. It's his weight class, yeah. Dude, I what mean, if Roman comes out here and it's like a different beast, dude? Like two or five Roman deletes. Maybe shit. that's what he needs. He looked like shit in, in his last fight, dude. Like, I mean, he was gassed by fucking minute seven. I mean, he Matthew could gas at two o five, so. But he also fought the whole twenty five. So what are you gonna do? Right. What a dog. What a dog. Um. <laughs> Anyways, by the way, I kind of hated this fight on the main card. No hate to these girls. Yeah, I'm good. I I almost want to skip it, but I'm not going to. Myra Buena Silva uh, coming off a loss to Raquel Pennington in January for the vacant UC uh, women's bantamweight title. Taking on Macy Chason, who you know, former top veteran. We know we know what she is at this point in her career. 32 years old, nine and three. That's married to Macy Chason now, by the way. Oh, really? She got married not too long ago. Yeah. Just alternating wins and losses. Um, Her and her partner. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, a lot of people like shit on women fights and they'll be like, oh, because that's women, I don't give a fuck. These, it's because of these women in particular, I don't care. And it's not even because they're bad, it's just stylistically, I think this fight's just going to blow. Honestly. You think so? Yeah. It depends. It depends on when Myra Bourne and Silva shows up. That's, in that's my true. Opinion. She can be a dog at times. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, that's what I'm saying. What do you got? <sighs> Wonderful fall on the same line on this one. Oh, man. I wouldn't I, put money on this fight. I'm not putting money on this fight outside of uh, for it to go the distance. You know, both of these girls got finishes, though. That's true. Or get finished. That's true. I'm going to take an MBS. I think she needs I think she needs a big win here. Mara Buena Silva. Oh, my God. MBS. <laughs> I can MBS, dude. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad bin Salman. Shout out his excellency. <laughs> Turkey all up. No, anyways. <laughs> That's not the MBS I was thinking about. Oh, you're talking? Oh, fucking. The guy who fucking dropped every single pass until it was until it was time. Yeah. <laughs> 
I just got the one that mattered, right? Look, dude, it's a good thing they they. <laughs> I, I'm actually gonna go the other way. I'm gonna go Macy Chase on. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that we're splitting on that one. I really don't. What's your reasoning? Me? Just vibes. Well, I like that she's tall for yeah. one. Like, yeah. I feel, and I feel like, dude, like she's a like she's a sleeper, bro. She really genuine. She, she has like some yeah. odd like little power behind her because she has that slender build. But she can crack a little bit. I remember thinking when she came off, uh, like straight off a of tough, that she was going to be a legit title contender. It hasn't worked out that way, but she's still around here, ring number feel, seven. But, if, but I know? feel like if, with that ring of the only fight, like unfortunately, right, the body up kick, like you know, freak. Knows, I mean, that's some freak shit. And that fight started going, yeah, like start off kind of decent, like yeah. on both ends. I agree. This is the real. This is the real. Uh, this might be the fight of most. Excited this might be the real main event. Real main event. Michael Venom Page. Michael M- Venom Page MVP. Uh, look, man, the record looks stellar. I believe it's twenty-one and two at this point in his career. Uh, actually, I think it's it's twenty-two. By the way, did you see uh Ian doing his impression of MVP? I did actually. He honestly, I gotta be honest with you, he kind of makes me laugh. I kind of like Ian Machado Gary. I love Ian Machado Gary. You saw his kid? Yeah, I did. That is cute. (laughs) Good for him. Anyways, do Conor McGregor (laughs) do poets on? He said. Do Max Holloway. That motherfucker said right here. It's just his <laughs> Anyways, man. MVP coming back here. Fresh off his UFC debut win over Kevin Holland. Taking on Ian Machado, Gary. Ian Gary, 13-0. We know the story here, man. Hyped up prospect. But can he defeat arguably one of the best strikers in the UFC? Can he pull it off? I know what you're thinking. And I'm thinking the same thing. I mean, dude. I mean, let me break it down. Yeah, well, break it down. I mean, Ian could win this fight. I think if, if he if he does a lot of takedowns, keeps the exchanges short, and doesn't doesn't, doesn't let MVP yeah. get space, I feel like it should be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, I think there is a path to victory to, to Ian Gary. But at the same time, a lot of people I think assume it's like, oh, you know, MVP Bellator guy. You know, like I think he's still there's still going to be that narrative, and it's like, guys, when are you going to learn? That's what Kevin Holland said too. When are you going to fucking learn? You know? Yeah. And it's weird. People are actually kind of rallying back behind MVP now because they don't like Ian Gary, which, dude, what a, what a fucking sport, right? You uh, don't like one guy so much, you rally with the other guy who you didn't like before exactly. in the previous fight. Like, crazy. <laughs> disgusting behavior, but I agree. That's besides the point. I got Michael Venom Page in this one, Josh. I do as well. I do. As I, well. He will see you at the top. 